Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Natalie is at Dawn. I remain, I am your host, Shadow Fury333, and I apologize that last week I wasn't here. I was really busy last Saturday, so here I am now. Hope it wasn't too long of a break. Anyhow, we're going to start out this stream with a match between Lamadeus, North Chilean G, and I, Filch against Siguero, Catastrophe, and Radavadra on Titan Duel. Let's get to it. I actually haven't seen Filch around ever. Anyway, Lama Deus going for the Hovercraft Factory. North Chilean G and Filch not yet choosing their factories. Well, Catastrophe going for the light vehicles. Siguero going for the gunship plant, so we have an air player on the red team. Very quickly going for Black Dons as well. And Radavadra going for the ever-favorite Hovercraft. Back up on the blue team. Cloakybot Factory for North Chilean G. Light Vehicle Factory for Filch. So overall, this setup is fairly identical, except for the gunships instead of Cloakybots. Which leads me to believe we're going to see a lot of... A lot of raiding coming out from the northwest side, although at this point, it's just a bunch of cloaked constructors. What do we have on tap? Warriors! Oh, warrior and Glaive. So, as soon as the gunship plan gets revealed, though, that's going to be an interesting change. And at, at this point, it actually is my... Okay, it's not going to get revealed too soon. For a second, I was worried that maybe it would get revealed early. But even then, actually... Hang on. It is getting revealed completely aware. We have the Northwest team. Now they know that there is an air player, or they need to make anti-air, rather. And the immediate response is... Crashers. All right, Filch going for Crashers. Good choice. Lacton should be able to come in and deal a bit of damage in the meantime. It's not going to be able to kill too much, though. Maybe a couple of Metal Extractors. Not going to be able to kill the Commander any. Gets close, but no, won't be able to do much beyond that. However, there is a second Black Dawn coming up, so with that... No, never mind, the Commander is going down. Filch losing their Commander right in the first minute and a half of the game. So right off the bat, Southeast taking a pretty strong economic advantage by taking out Filch's Commander. Also, of course... That means it's a lot harder for the expansion to happen in the Northeast. However, we already have North Chilean G on that. They already have the Conjurer over to the Northeast, so it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal, but it's a manageably big deal. We should be seeing some reclaim coming up here in a moment. Not sure where the nearest constructor is. Looks like it is going to be Filch's Mason coming up, building up a storage immediately. And then going from there to presume... No, not even do much. Just build the storage and then build a bunch of power plants. Basically make up for the loss of their commander. At this point, though, Northwest is still actually fairly ahead for energy. They're not great for metal, but their energy income does mean they can reclaim the corpse, and that will help. As long as they can effectively reclaim the corpse, they should be fine. They should pull them back into a fairly healthy position. I don't see Filch doing that, mind you. And, like, there's a lot of juicy metal here. Come on, it's like, what is it? 530 metal. Yeah, go for it. Just go for it. Get that commander. Because at this point, there is a pair of Black Dons just hanging around, doing stuff, and making life miserable. Or at least there was a Black Don. Where's the other one? Wait, did that first one get shot down? Nope, it's very much alive. Okay, there it is. Yeah. So, there are Black Dons around the map, and while there are flails and crashes and a few... No, I don't think there's anything else. It doesn't look like... Oh, there are gremlins, yeah. So a few gremlins as well. There are anti-air forces coming from the northwest side. The Black Dawn kind of did its job. I mean, it really made cost. It's not even dead yet. That's the thing. It's like everything went well for the southeast team right off the bat. However, economically speaking, the northwest team has recovered quite well, actually. They're already ahead economically. They've expanded way faster. I mean... The Conjurer over to the northeast did a lot of work to set that up and basically make up for the loss of the commander. And another commander coming in here. Well, another commander being threatened, but Lamadeus having a much better chance, much better time getting rid of that Black Dawn. I'm not saying chance, what am I saying? But yeah, much better time getting rid of the Black Dawn. Unfortunately, losing the. F no, not quite. The Flail just barely alive. But yeah, that Black Dawn didn't quite manage to do really anything, actually. So Lamadeus in a very healthy position right now. The northwest side is still losing a bit of metal extractors here and there. That's a small problem. But no, sooner or later that will be sorted out. However, southeast, they are expanding still. The southwest is going to the southeast team. Although the defenses up here aren't bad. North Chilean G should be able to take this one metal spot right next to their conjurer. And the northeast is pretty securely in their command as well, though they 
want to get that fairly quickly. I mean, they are still behind economically, just slightly, but they are behind economically. So that is still a thing. However, raids coming in here. This should be able to take care of one metal extractor, maybe a mason as well. The Black Dawn's going to try to put a stop to that, but it might actually get stopped itself if it's not careful. No, not easily. Still, one metal extractor down. That's not bad. The mason didn't go down, so it's not a huge difference. In the southeast team, yeah, they're not going to rebuild that quickly for some reason. I don't know why Sigero didn't just go and do that, but apparently they didn't. So, there you go. Sometimes that happens. Anyhow, that being said, the position that the northwest team has is actually pretty healthy. I mean, they do have this one southwest corridor here that's kind of open, but everything else, like the northeast, they have a fairly comfortable staging position. They can go from there, and they have the metal extractors there. There's some in the back that really need to be rebuilt. I don't know why Filch is not rebuilding this metal extractor or taking the commander. Like, there's enough energy. They could build more, yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's just that there's not so little energy that they can't reclaim with what they have now. Or use it to get more metal extractors. Or just build another mason and use that instead. I don't understand why Filch is doing this. They are finally getting that mason, though. Hopefully that'll be used to build stuff up. Same time, some contained bit of a light contain over to the northeast of the southeast base. Not really sure that that's going to be of much use. I mean, it does stop the Black Dawn, so that's something. Stopping the Black Dawn is at least a useful thing. It's, it's good in its own right. I mean, if you stop the Black Dawn, you stop any more harassment on your commanders, you stop a com harassment onto metal extractors. There's the metal extractor being rebuilt, by the way, and also the northeast gets a little bit safer as well. So, you know, stopping the Black Dawns from moving around is still good. Though it might not last long. We'll see. The Halberds here... Well, they're actually having a pretty okay time. Ah, never mind. Support forces coming in here, making that no longer the case, and the Black Dawn's basically coming in for a suicide mission. One of them's about to go down. The second one will be able to get out of there alive, but this Black Dawn... Oh, it's just... Wow. Just behind enemy lines. Gets across the ravine in a very strange fashion. But just behind enemy lines, or friendly lines rather, so it will be reclaimed probably by the Southeast team. Bit of a shame for the Northwest team, they didn't manage to get the money back from basically deflecting that entire attack. But they did manage to deflect the attack, and the second Black Dawn is coming in here, and that will be able to get away without dying probably. It's going to go for another pass. Actually, if it goes for another pass, it will be able to take out the Razor completely. There goes the Razor! Not much else can deal with that Black Dawn right now, except for a flail in the back lines. Surprise Flail kills the Black Dawn, and the Conjurer is right here with a lot of reclaim available for it. A thousand metal reclaim, nicely done. Not to mention, Northwest is on par with Southeast in terms of static economy. If not slightly ahead. So, their reclaim on top of this is going to be absolutely amazing. Now, at the same time, over to the Southwest... Actually, that that's turned into a fire base. This southwest side is basically leaving a nice opening for the northwest team, and of course the northeast is still in their control. So, at this point, there's going to be a quick pincer coming into the southeast side. We're probably going to see the forces here move around south through here. At the same time, yeah, it looks like, okay, the slashes are known about. At the same time, probably see North Chilean G coming in trying over the north. Filch might come in as well. I don't see Filch's army being especially useful. The slashes are going to be good for holding the line, making it a little, little bit harder for Sagero to come over to the north. And why is North Chilean G retreating? That's weird. They're grouping quite a bit further back than I thought they would. Hmm, actually no, it looks like everyone's going to be trying to just collapse onto this center setup here, but that's not going to work for too long. However, mostly that's because Radovaj just sent a bunch of halberds to their deaths. I'm a bit surprised they are using halberds against scorchers, or against slashers like that. That's... Not a great idea. It's not a terrible idea, it's just not great. I mean, when dealing with slashers as hovercraft, it's actually kind of tricky. Sorry, not slashers. What am I saying? Scalpels! Damn it, why must so many units start with the letter S? Why is that the... I, I don't know why it's my brain fart. I always screw that up. But anyway, the scalpels is what I meant to say. Because against slashers, actually, halberds are really good, but those slashers are over here. Halberds are over here. So not a bad choice. Against scalpels... Halberds, I think in large enough numbers are fine. I mean, they don't cost very much, so it's... Yeah, by cost, it's fine. It's just right now, the numbers are not in their favor. The cost is not in their favor. 
And that is going to possibly do it in. And the north side as well being broken pretty slowly, but surely Segaro trying to push the way out of there, but at the same time leaving an opening for North Chilean G to come in. Not sure why they're being as timid as they are, but still there is an opening right here. A few static defenses are up, but not much. No Stardust or anything really meaningful. So as it stands, Segaro, uh, North Chilean G could very easily come through here and rip everything apart. There's not much here stopping things. And like I said, the southwest, pretty much entirely under the northwest team's control. The northeast as well, although it is getting challenged. I'm a bit surprised North Chilean G has not tried to answer that challenge, but they haven't yet. Now the penetrator over to the southwest, that does pose a small problem, but at this point, northwest's economy is way ahead of southeast's. Like, it's twice that of southeast's side. I don't know if the northwest team is aware of that. But if they are, if they become aware of that, they'll probably just go for the assault immediately, because at this point, why not? There's very little to lose. So, small raids coming in here, not really going to do too much. At the same time, though, over to the south, we finally see some Spectre action. Nice. Same time, very reluctant. Why is North Chilean so reluctant to attack here? I, I guess they expect there to be Stardust, but they... Like, do they know what's there? Well, okay, they know a few of the defenses that are there. They know the Stinger's there. I don't know, I'm really surprised they are as timid as they are. Because that's open. It's getting decreasingly open, but there's quite a few openings in that area. If they just poke around a bit with some glaive, they'd see them. I don't know, unless they expect that the Southeast team would converge onto them as soon as that attack happened. Or would go for a counterattack. Because, I mean... Radovadra is putting quite a bit of pressure over to the southwest, along with the Catastrophe. So it's not like the southwest side of the map is entirely safe, and a counterattack is definitely a possibility, but... At this point, North Chilean G is just losing units without really doing a whole lot of damage. And the southeast team seems to be winning the War of Attrition just barely. Although, a lot of it's going to come down to this attack here. We finally see Lamadeus going for a dagger, basically a breakout attack, not managing to do a whole lot with it yet. Okay, never mind. I'm not entirely sure what players are waiting for here. North Chilean G, are you finally going for it? You're finally going for it, at least defending the north side of the map. That's something. Actually, North Chilean G and Filch together going in to at least try to block off attacks to the northeast side of the map. Not sure why they aren't going further from there, though. I mean... At this point, most of the army coming out of Segaro is hammers. That's almost the entirety of their army. Actually, the commander is in a vulnerable position. This could go very badly for Segaro's commander. The Spectre, unfortunately, not hitting the commander. It does hit one of the warriors, so it's not a huge... Not a huge amount of damage. Something. But hey, Filch going in here, and I... See Filch's plan has actually been pretty smart. Gets rid of the commander. The Raptors are still alive. The Raptors should be able to get rid of the, the, the Stinger as well if they target it. Or at the very least, leave everything open for the Stinger. I... North Chilean G, unfortunately, not really backing them up. But still, the commander is down, so some revenge has been exacted, and at the same time, they're... a bit of an opening being broken, but at the same time, at the same time, the northwest side did just start losing a lot of units compared to the southeast side. Like, that wasn't great from attrition. I don't think it was just that attack, though. I think the southwest fight is also causing problems in that regard. Still, a couple penetrators going down will deal with that. At the same time, over to the northeast, it looks like Filch going in for a second attack. And the Ravagers aren't doing too hot, though, so I don't really know how that's going to work out. What is North Chilean G up to? Are they building Striders or something? I just feel like North Chilean G isn't really doing a whole lot. They have glaives going around here. Ah, okay, that's why. They were building a bunch of glaives. But even then, for the amount of metal they have, that's not very many glaives. Like, I'm not sure what North Chilean G is planning, but I don't... I don't see a whole lot of concentrated assaults coming in here. I expected they would be going for Striders or something, because I haven't been seeing many units coming out of their factories. But no, I don't see that either. So I'm not sure what their plan is. At the same time, though, the Northeast is getting heavily assaulted, but this is, I think, what North Chilean G was afraid of. Like, getting locked into this war where the attrition fight gets in favor of their opponents. And, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, because, you know, they fight they fight against them, and, you know, they leave a lot of metal lying around that they can pick up, and they didn't manage to break the entire thing. 
That might have been what North Chilean G was waiting for, but at the same time, I don't know what they're building. There's like some glaives and specters coming out of their factories, but nothing is staying alive long enough to even know what's meant to be happening. I guess the main idea is to just go for specters. And at the same time, together going for some sides on top of that, so this is still not working out too well. Yeah, so Gedro should be able to deal quite a bit of damage. Get rid of a few metal extractors. Get rid of quite a few power structures, or at least massively limit them. But at this point, the Northwest power economy is ridiculously healthy. As in, ah, Geoplant, that's why I'm thinking, what is going on? Why is it so healthy? Yeah, there's a Geoplant. That, that's part of it, but even then, that's not enough. It's just mostly wind generators that are generating a lot of power. But at this point, Filch... Rather unlike North Chilean G, has been saving up a lot of units and should be able to go in for quite a strong push over to the north side. At the same time, Lamadeus over to the southwest does have about half a dozen scalpels, which should be able to break through some of this. Get rid of a couple of quills. Get rid of a couple of metal extractors. That will help, if nothing else. Anyway, there's the assault force. I still don't... Why are these Ravagers all in a bunch? Does Phil not know that line moves a thing? I... Sorry, it frustrates me whenever people don't use line move in this game, because unless they're using slashers, sorry, scorchers, it makes no sense to keep your units bunched up. You're just going to get hit by splash damage, and they are just going to die, or things like the stinger will hit a bunch of your units at once. Regardless, the Ravagers are managing to get in, and they are managing to deal with all this stuff. Also, you can't shoot through your own units, so bear that in mind as well, but still, Sigurdur's Firebase does go down, and that's, that's what was meant to be achieved in the first place. And some Spectre support is coming in here, but mostly it is just Filch basically just wrecking up the place with some Ravagers. And there goes this, this Stinger. Finally, that opens things up, and I think we're going to see North Chilean G rush in here. Or they would, except for the fact that the Glaives are not in a great spot, and there are too many Slashers up below them to be able to actually take this out. This is actually where the Halberds would come really handy, but I don't see any of them in position. They're all on the south side of the map, and none of them are really in position. None of them are really going to be helping out here. Looks like Sigero is rebuilding the Cloakybot factory in this roughly the same spot, too. I mean, unfortunately, that attack didn't actually manage to deal a huge amount of damage, but even then, the reclaim is still going in favor of Filch. They've gotten quite a lot of reclaim, actually. They're doing very nicely here. So yeah, overall, this is going to be a still a dominant situation for the Northwest team. At least economically. In terms of attrition, it's it's in favor of Southeast, but not by a huge amount. Still, though, it's a little bit early. It is starting to turn somewhat. At the very least, it is difficult to call. The Glaives coming in here for North Chilean G should break this up. And actually coming in very nicely in the line of these Slashers. So some of the Slashers are going to go down, but not enough. The Glaives are just taking too much damage. Completely unable to maintain a position there. I'm not really sure what the point of the Glaive Swarms is here. I mean, I get the idea is kind of to get rid of the Slashers, but there is too much in the way of static defense right now to deal with that with Glaives. Like I said, Halberds would be a great idea here. Warriors would... Actually, Warriors would die too quickly. Zeus would be a great idea here. Actually, that'd be a wonderful idea if you go for Zeus's. Scythes might also work, but that'd be a bit of a suicide mission. The Spectres are a great idea, too. Because that's up there. And... Yeah, for those of you who haven't watched very many of these, normally the games don't last as long. It's just 3v3s have a tendency to last long, and people were requesting that quite a bit a couple weeks ago. So, yeah. 3v3s can go this long, and... Like I said, a lot of the players are not making moves that I would expect to be made. Or the times where it would make sense to make them. So yeah, that tends to drag the games on a little bit. At any rate, it looks like the Slasher Force is finally going down. North, North Chilean G might be losing the commander. They're going to lose the commander. What the heck? Why did you walk your commander in there? Was that a mistake? That must have been a misinput. I can't believe North Chilean G would just walk their commander into a group of Slashers, getting them killed. What the heck is that? Uh, at this point, it's just... Not really working out. North Chilean G is still throwing units into death. Yeah, no kidding. Are you... I don't know. I think North Chilean G must have been tired when they played this game because they don't seem to be paying much attention. I just don't understand the commander thing. And also, the... Like, the Glaives at this point are not going to do anything. 
The Warriors will kill them too quickly. And Filter's forces aren't going to come in here. That was kind of the turnaround. Losing North Dillingy's commander, I think that's going to open things up for the Southeast team to break out the North side. Just completely tore, tear it to pieces. Probably go through this opening here and then go down across here and that'll do it. So I don't really know how this is going to work for Northwest team. It seems like they've just lost everything. The Southeast team has managed to take all the position. They've managed to take this reclaim field pretty much entirely for themselves. And they've lost most of everything coming in otherwise. Like, they're completely able to stabilize in this northeast side. As soon as the northeast expansion is destroyed, there's basically no hope left. Lamade is still doing a valiant job holding the southwest side, but that's pretty much all there is holding this in. The center line has been crossed. The southeast team should be able to just push through from there. Yeah, getting rid of those few metal or few wind generators that were still alive, and after that. Like I said, this is the opening. This this path here, there's not much in the way. There's basically no static defenses in Filch's base at all. And the mobile defenses aren't really all that there either. Like, nothing really is available here to actually deal with anything. There's, like I said, this is at the north side going down. And that's basically it. it looks like North Trilogy pointing out that Banshees are being made, I see. Which is a fair point, but at this point, having lost the Northeast expansion, there's not a whole lot of position the Northwest team has. They had a strong pincer position they could have worked from, but I think they just went for a contain. They, they seem to just be playing it very slowly, which I didn't understand. I still don't understand. It didn't work out. I expected North Chilean G to like, bulk up the army two or three times what they had there, and then push in before a lot of stuff got built up, before Segaro got completely entrenched. But that didn't happen. So I don't really understand what the logic was. All I could see was North Chilean G set up, got a bit timid, didn't do much, and then when they tried to do something, they got torn to pieces. Because by that point, enough defenses were set up. And the Southwest seems to have been reclaimed by Lamadea, so that's something. But with the Northeast being taken by the Southeast team, and the Southeast team having a lot of reclaim to work with now, I don't see this working especially well for the Northwest team. They're going to go for it, but they're losing a lot of units. Like, their attrition rating has gone way down over the last, I don't know, 10 minutes. It's continuing to drop as well. Like, they're not saving the units. They're not keeping the economic advantage either, so they can't just play with high macro and low micro and win that way because their macro isn't, or their economy isn't good enough to really support that right now. I'm curious if there are any striders being built up, but no, there are airplanes being built up. Looks like Catastrophe is going for that. At the same time, not much else in terms of factories is being built up for the northwest side. The northwest still stuck in their initial factories. Trying to set up a bit of a defensive position, but at this point, I don't see that working out. I mean, there's so many halberds coming in from... Well, okay, not very many, but there are enough halberds coming in still from Radovadra that it's going to be a problem trying to break through that. Not to mention, with the planes coming in here, we're probably going to see... Oh, ravens? Really? I expected we'd see Thunderbirds, but no, we're seeing ravens instead. Still, that's going to be a bit of a threat. And also, the fact that we are having air units coming out from the southeast side does split the northwest's now somewhat strained economy among anti-air and anti-ground units. So it's going to be even easier for the southeast to be able to wreck everything up as long as they're placing their units in the right spot. If they're putting the units out of position and getting the air hit by anti-air and that sort of thing, then yeah, that's going to be a problem. But if their air units are not getting hit by anti-air, then that's money that's going to waste on the northwest side, and northwest cannot afford to waste any money anymore. They do not have anywhere near... They, they have an economic disadvantage about as big as their old economic advantage. So that is not happening. Actually, I think this is going to be the final attack right here. The Banshees and Ravens coming in. Oh, is there going to be no support on the ground from them? I mean, it's pretty clear that Radavadra has taken the southwest, uh, southwest strongly. The northeast, Segaro has pretty much got on lock. And once the southwest is fully taken, we're going to see a push north from there. Like this, they're going to go north. If they even, if the game even lasts that long, they're going to go north. Segaro seems to be having a bit of a harder time getting in. The Stardust's doing a fine job defending, but like I said, this that's not the real target. Like, this is the path to take. Going through North Chilean G's line which is fairly thin, 
so it's not going to be too hard to get through. But going through North Chilean G's line, going up from there into the base, I don't know if... Are they aware they can do that? No, they have no idea. I mean, they have some idea, actually. Not a huge idea, though. I guess they assume that there's defenses over there, but they haven't seen them. Like, the Southeast team hasn't seen the defenses. They could send in a glaive or two just to scout out to see what's happening. Or they could have. I mean, right now they can't, because they have to go through a line of units. But back when they could have, they could have, but they didn't. At this point, though, we should be seeing the Southwest push. Southwest side here, push north. After this attack here, this last attack, this probably is it. After this, I don't see the South, the Northwest team having much. If they don't manage to push back hard enough, and it doesn't seem that they are, they are in fact being forced to retreat, and there it is, right about to realizing this is the time to strike. Going in as the forces are retreating, she'll be able to take them out along with Catastrophe's help. That is going to take out Lamadeus's force. Tear apart most of the economy coming in here, and once that's dealt with, Northwest is going to lose pretty much all their overdrive, which is going to wreck what they have for economy. Like, most of their economy is based on overdrive. A lot of that overdrive is based on the geothermal plant here. As soon as this metal, or that wind generator dying, that's going to be a huge blow to the economy. Or, it should be. Oh, never mind, no, right, because it's mostly wind gens doing the economy in the first place. It's not going to be a blow to the economy. I mean, this one metal extractor is counting for quite a bit now. Now it goes down. There we go. That's going to be the thing. And also, like I said, Southeast team just has more territory. They have more metal extractors. They don't have anywhere near as much overdrive, but they also don't need it. And the Stardust taking all the hits from the Ravens. Should be taken out soon enough. There it is. That Stardust going down is going to spell the end of the game. There's no way Filch can easily break this, and Seagato's force should be able to just march up. There were no defenses behind there, so that's exactly what I was talking about. The opening was made in the northeast, and that is... Oh. Filch apparently throwing in the towel already. Kind of makes sense. So Filch throwing in the towel, Lamadeus getting control of that, but at the same time, Lamadeus the southwest has been pretty much torn to pieces. Radovatra stopping in a relatively safe location after dealing with they dealing the damage they did. Unfortunately, the forces are a little bit out of position, very sparsely set up right now. There's going to be an easy time for Lamadeus to come in and try to take out what they can, but that's not going to be enough. So, this is... this is game. I'm actually a little bit surprised that we aren't seeing a surrender coming from the Northwest team. They still think they have a chance here, but unfortunately there's just way too much behind. Uh, there's way too much behind the no Southeast... sorry, yeah, the Southeast push right now. There's... there's the economy, there's all the units that aren't even here, there's the reserve units being pulled up to the front lines, there's just the sheer size of the army that's on the front lines. And yeah, there we go. Northeast team, real Northwest team realizes this. The Southeast team wins. I'm curious what the metal stats were, though. Oh, yeah, the Northwest team, like I said, they had an economic advantage for most of the game. And I mean, by the end, it looks like they actually both Northwest and Southeast produced the same amount of metal. Well, use the same amount of metal. A bit more excess coming from the North Southeast team, but still, that did a really good job because the Northwest also had the unit value advantage. This is what I mean. There was an attrition advantage on the Northwest side. Up until the point where they really started to go ham on that firebase, which I guess I can kind of see why I wasn't seeing any attacks there earlier. But when I was setting A should go for that, that was because it felt like at that point, at that specific time, it would have worked. It was too late when it actually happened. Also, probably doesn't help that there was all that energy income being made. I mean, energy is nice, gives you overdrive, it gives you some room for reclaim. But that's a lot of metal being spent on energy. Like, that was a massive amount of metal being spent on energy. They could have been spent on units. When they had the economic advantage, going for units instead of going for a bunch of energy would have meant they could have secured this area over here. Or secured the southwest, actually. The southwest was fairly open. I mean, there were the penetrators and such later on, but Radovatra wasn't pushing a whole lot there, and Catastrophe really wasn't pushing very much, so that got broken. That could have taken the entire base out. It's a bit harder. I mean, there was a lot of internal defenses, unlike the northwest side. But yeah, I don't see quite the point of all those energy structures. I guess it was an overdrive grid, but yeah, that was a lot of metal that could have gone to units. Anyway, I'm going to be going to another match. This time is a 1v1. Next two matches are 1v1s. This one is a bit of a interesting one. It's a request from Sav is Me, or Sav It's Me. 
them fighting against Exploit, who actually apparently has managed to get a decent rating in 1v1 by their LO rating. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, Sav is me wondering what to do in this map, in this match against Exploits on Red Comet, or Exploit on Red Comet. Exploits is a Battle Right player, what am I thinking? So that'll be the game in a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up when it's up.